And then we all got down on the onto the onto the um, bow of the ship, and um, our objective was straight into the into the door on the on the first level, yeah. clear all the decks. Yeah. And I can remember. Um, First of all, I can remember at the top, because when you're in the helicopter, you put like your balaclavas on mm -hmm. and um, everyone puts the balaclavas on and you get ready, you know, when it's two minutes to go in, everyone finally checks each other off. We're in. Yeah. And then when you're down on the ship, obviously there's lights and everything. I can remember we, we stack up on the door and, and when you stack up on the door, it's fucking massive anxiety. You, know? right. you don't know what's behind, whether it's, you could be the explosive devices, people, yeah. you know, could, you could be walking into a wall of bullets. Yeah. So anyway, you wait for the squeeze from the back. The doorman opens the door. And goes, All right. Welcome to another episode of Paul Mort Talks Shit. And today I'm talking shit with man like Ollie Ollerton. Ollie, what are you saying? I'm super excited. Mate, this. I'm very pumped for this. Also here is producer Mac. Just messing with the messing with the settings. Mac is back on. Me. You know what? I felt bad today. I said to Mac, I said, mate, do you want to come on the podcast? Because I feel like... Me and Mac do a lot of podcasts together, but sometimes when we get big guests on, I kind of like, Mac, you're not in this one. <laughs> I feel really bad. I did it with Tyson Fury. I did it with Chris Ramsey. Who, have I done it with anyone else? Uh, I haven't, have I? Only uh, them two. Only them two. All right, so I, uh, I first saw Ollie on TV in 2017 on the, um, on the TV show, SES Who Dares Wins, which I'm sure we're going to have some fun talking about <laughs> today. And the guy that I know, Ryan Roddy, won the first one. And then another guy that I know, which is mad, was um, Moses, won the second one. Yeah. I knew them both. Well, you knew him. I knew them both, which was mad. Wow. And then, not that I only know winners, Ollie. Yeah, yeah. But I saw that show, and that part of me was like, I could do that. And then the other part of me was like, fuck no, there's no way I'm doing that. And then I saw, I think I must have searched for something online, yeah. found this thing called Breakpoint, did it, and it was a life changing. No shit, a life-changing experience for me. I was just talking to Ollie's girlfriend about it there before, Laura. Shout out, Laura, uh, about it. And it was a life-changing experience for me. So first up, thanks for that, my Pleasure, friend. Mate. Pleasure. Do you know what I was saying there, right? When I first came, it was in Pittenford Park. Yeah. And I came in my flash car. Yeah. I parked it, and little Michelle mm. came over, and she went, who the fuck has parked that car like that? Which flash bastard he has? And I was like, this is serious, this. She, and I was like, you don't fuck with her, do you? <laughs> no. So I was like, this, I was like this is serious, this. And anyway, then she said, right, get in the back of this fucking van. And it was, it was, it was like a blacked out, what they called? The Humvees. troop carriers. Yes. Then, yeah, yeah. Troop carriers. And, I, and it was pitch black and it was tight like that. And then I had to put a fucking bag on my head, right? Within 30 seconds, I'd, I'd quit. I was like, this is not for me. I yeah. put it on. I just start getting really claustrophobic. That's what that yeah. was my thing. And she said it was these words. This is this change. These words were so similar to changing. She said, you're not fucking quitting yet. You're not allowed. I'm not letting you. And she said, just imagine you're on a bus with no windows. And I was like, oh, that was it. Yeah. That was fine. And I'm mad that. So Crazy. thank you for it's that. Me framing. Dude, it's mad. That's all. Should, imagine you're on a bus with no windows. And my simple brain was like, oh, Okay, yeah, okay, I will. <laughs> okay, I will. I've been there before. <laughs> it was wild. It was wild. All right, so um, you guys, had, uh, in fact, listen, we'll have done an intro by now on Ollie before we shot this and probably talked loads of shit about him. Um, Ollie, let's, listen, I'm not going to fuck around here. Mm. What's the fucking deal with Channel 4? <laughs> Sorry, you know what? I thought we'd warm into that. No, one. we're not warm into it. Fucking. Let's just go for it. What's the deal with Channel 4? You know yeah. what? When I, I actually. So you were on the show for how long? I was on the show since 2015. So that's what? Six episodes? Yeah. Six seasons, yeah. Six seasons. Yeah. You know, that's that includes the celebrity ones as well. But, yeah. you know, I was actually in this because we're at Breakpoint HQ at the moment yeah. in Shropshire. I was actually. Oh, that's over. where we are. Yeah. That's <laughs> Okay, honestly, I haven't seen anything but fucking Combine Harvest. That's for about three hours. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I was sat over there on that chair, yeah. and, and that's when I got the call. And my my reaction when I got the call was, How did they frame it? They said, like, oh, um, Ollie, unfortunately, Channel 4 have decided that um, they're going to uh, change up the DS. And uh, that was that's how they framed it. So yeah. uh, they're not going to, you know, you're not going to be used on the next one. Yes. And my immediate reaction was I smiled to myself and I said in my head, I said, you got what you wish for. And that's what I said to myself. So when I dealt with that, I just yeah. went, oh, okay, no problem. Yeah. Um, and he was like very apologetic and all this and everything. I was like, I said, don't, don't worry about it. It's, yeah. you know, it's fine. It's yeah. fine. And the reason for that was, is because my internal messaging for a long time, and I totally understand the whole thing about internal messaging. My yeah. message, the message I said to myself was, 
the break point has always been my priority. My business has always been my, yes. my priority. Yes. And the TV was very much a second job. Yes. Now, for me, you know, we've just taken on the new Australian SAS Who Dares Wins, which is a totally separate thing, mm -hmm. uh, which is brilliant. Um, and for me, what had happened is... Oh, so is that a different channel? Yeah, it's a different channel. Oh, okay. That's a really good one. <laughs> 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 I love it, man. Yeah, they, those guys are awesome. <laughs> um, but the thing is, my what what was happening is basically the TV stuff was starting to suffocate my business. Yes, and you know when I look at it, I would have never gone to them and handed them a notice and said I've had enough. Yeah, because at the end of the day, it's it was it was money above all else. Yeah, um, you know it's it's like a contract. But um, so. When I got the news, I wasn't, I wasn't really disappointed. It was only afterwards I was, I was absolutely, I was angry. Yeah. And I was angry because take me out of the picture. Look at the, look at the situation we've just been through, been through COVID. Yeah. A lot of mental health issues. I'm dealing on a daily basis, doing webinars and stuff for people. Yeah. Suffering with mental health issues. A yeah. lot of people losing their jobs. A lot of people uncertain about the future. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know, the people that advocate mental health and strength and inspire people, they say two months before filming, you're not needed. Yeah. You know what I mean? When we've invested so much of our yeah. own, you know, our, our heart and soul into yeah. that show, yeah. take me out of the equation. They should not treat anyone like that. And that's what pissed me off. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But if it was yeah. someone that didn't have your, yeah. you think about that. If it's someone that doesn't have your ability to reframe that yeah. and maybe doesn't have a business. Yeah, exactly. If, so, if, I mean, if, what if they didn't if have was, a business? Yeah. If it was their sole occupation, their sole revenue, yeah. Uh, so you know it would have been a welcome break to then finish that and go right yeah so i've got the i've got the net you know the channel four thing you know that's gonna be money coming in yeah. and that you know if i hadn't set all this up yeah and i've treated every show like it's the last one you essentially be unemployed yeah. right i'd be unemployed and it'd be like i'd be struggling beyond belief now but and that's why i'm so angry because if they did it yeah, to you know what we're doing you'll be doing people. teeth whitening ads on fucking instagram <laughs> I, need <to> get some, <laughs> I need to get some teeth first <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so 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 you are you are, and I, I remember seeing. It, I think I seen it. I saw something about the fucking sun or the fucking mirror or something. You're going, yeah. was it like from front page news or some shit? Yeah, it was the it was the highest red, um, it was the hi highest red piece in the sun that week, really? and it was the highest rating post I've ever had on Instagram. Wow, really? Isn't yeah. that funny? Yeah, forty two thousand likes. Wow, over a thousand comments, even more than that, I think. Yeah. And yeah. all of the feedback would have been that shit. Yeah, but it's it's all positive, you know. It's all really positive from everyone, which yeah. was it was massively supportive. Yeah. Um, and um, but the thing is, you know, I can sit in now because I've just come back six weeks away in Australia. Yeah, I've just come back, and for me to now, I should be now if I was still doing that, I'd be up in Scotland, and. We wouldn't be sat here, for instance, but there's so many, you know, th this business would just be standing still. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Because it'll have been a challenging time for the business as well, though, yeah, right? Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. You know, we've had to shelve all of our front-facing events, our corporate stuff, our public events and everything. But, you know, one thing about us, one thing about not just people in the Special Forces, but definitely pe people in the Special Forces, we're experts at finding ourselves in the shit and looking for the opportunities. Yes. And there is always an opportunity in crisis. You are fucking adaptability. Yeah. In it. Yeah. We talked to a, a friend of ours, Martin Stable, the next Royal Marine. And that's what he was. Yeah. He said, that's one of the, the, the major reasons why, um, he's been able to be successful with fighting and his business. Yeah. And that because of that adaptability. Oh, is that, that 50 kill? 50 cal, huh? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Dude, he's yeah. got some energy, Martin, and he's yeah. some energy, some fucking, but I, 50 cal, we had him on, he was fun. Mm. Uh, yeah, and he was talking about that. I've got a question for you that I didn't ask him. Yeah. Do you think to join the special forces, you have to be a little bit fucking mental? <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you have to have a bit of psychopath in you, I think. I think that helps. I think um, you have to be a bit mental to, to actually put yourself through that. I mean, it's the hardest thing I would ever choose to do. I wouldn't say it's the hardest thing I've done, but no. those things are not by choice. Those things have not been by yes. choice. Mm -hmm. That is by choice. And I've had to do the, the fucking thing twice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I'm even more stupid than anyone else. <laughs> double stupid. <laughs> That's a bit double dumb. Yeah, double, double dumb. dumb. So, so double let's, dumb. Talk about, yeah. let's talk about that then. Um, joining the special forces that came about on the back of you being in, you were in, in Royal Marines. Royal Marines, yeah, Royal yeah. Marines, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was You were in the Royal Marines for how long? I was in the Royal Marines for five years. Yeah. And then I joined the Special Forces six years. Yeah. But it was an interesting part of my life that because I'd lost interest. I came back came back, you know, I passed 
As a special, uh, as, as a Royal Marine. Yeah. Joined my unit up in Scotland, 4-5 Commando. Went to Northern Ireland, my first tour. Yeah. And then came straight back off that, and we were rebounded straight out to, to Northern Iraq. Yeah. How old were you? Operation Desert there? Storm. I was 18 years old. 18 straight, straight, straight in. Yeah. 18, 18 in training, 19 in, in Northern Ireland. And, mm. you know, at 19, I think we can all relate to this, that the fact, you know, we all think, you think you're a man at 19, don't you? I can't yeah. that far back. <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. I can only remember because it's the time I joined up, and I was yeah. like, yeah, you're a real man now. And, yeah. like, you just look back and... You you absolutely know. I mean, I'm, my son's 19 now. Yeah. And I look at him and think about me being in Iraq yeah. at the same age. And it just doesn't, doesn't compute for me. But yeah, yeah I, was, I, was, I was just a pop. A little yeah. pop. Yeah. But um, for me, it was an interesting time because I'd lost interest in the Royal Marines. Yeah. Yeah, very quickly as soon as I joined. Because, you know, when I fucking, when I joined up, I got this brochure, right? And when I opened the brochure, there was a bloke um, on a windsurf yeah. in the Bahamas. Really? With his shorts on and that. You know, and his missus was on the beach. She was blonde, beautiful. And like he was on leave and it was like having that a great That was the Royal time. Marines? That was, the, that that is... was in the brochure. Wow. You know, that, that was in the brochure. And then there was a, you know, a, a Royal Marine in his uniform. You know, I just thought, fucking, all the chicks are going to love yeah. anyone that dresses <laughs> yeah. like that. You know, yeah. so I was sold on that. Passed out of training. I was on the main gate at 4-5 Commando on Christmas Eve, pissed off. Like you wouldn't believe, thinking this was because you didn't get what you signed up for. Yeah, it <laughs> wasn't in the brochure. Sort yeah. of fake yeah. dream. Do you know what? Yeah. That's actually happened to me. Being in fact, we're totally ties in view, but that's actually ha- happened to me when I got really successful. Yeah, I was like, this isn't. I'd sacrifice a lot just to make money and move to fucking Marbella yeah. and this nice car and that. And I'm like, actually, this isn't. This isn't anything like what I thought it would be. Yeah. So you had that same experience. But that's the thing. I mean, yeah. I mean, and, and the thing, thing for me, I mean, I'm not. You know, it's, it's a sales brochure at the end of the day, and yes. it's a lot has changed since that date, but. You know, for me, it was like going to Northern Ireland was a big eye opener for me. You know, yeah. that was taking it away from the brochure. That was taking it away from everything and going, yes, this, you know, people call it a conflict, whatever you want to call it. It's yeah. war. When people are trying to kill you, yeah, it's war. Yeah. Um, so that for me changed everything. I've realized, I realized two things on that tour. And that was, this is a serious, this is serious business. Yes. Second thing I realized is, I don't know why it was. I just had this epiphany. I can remember I was walking across the, the ground and, and there was a guy that was in the patrol uh, and, and one of the guys used to carry what's known as ECM equipment. Basically, the, what that does is that blocks the signal for any uh, improvised explosive devices. Yeah. So if anyone's trying to like communicate with a mobile device that yeah. will blow up a, um, a bomb that yes. you're walking past, it, yeah. it blocks that signal. Right, okay. So anyway, I'm looking across, I'm, I'm walking across, patrolling across the ground in South Armagh, bandit country. And I look across at this guy Johnny, and the earpiece that basically identifies that there's a device, yes. he's just walking along, and it's not even connected to its he- his head. Right. It's swinging oh, along geez. by the side oh, of him. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> and I just thought, holy shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was like, he just didn't, there was no care in the world. And then yeah. I don't know why in that same moment, I just looked and I thought, that all these missions, all these jobs, all these tasks that yeah. they gave us that were very real, yeah. And made us think, whoa, we're going out there to, to do something really perfect. I thought, we're just bait. Yeah. We're just bait. They're putting us on the ground. And uh, this was just like an epiphany. I, yeah. You know, I had no reason to think this. It just came to me. I thought, we're bait. They're putting us on the ground to get attacked. Yeah. yeah. And that's how, the, that's what they do, basically. They put us on the ground, wait till we get attacked by the, R, the IRA or the enemy, wherever yeah. you are. Yeah. And then they build the intelligence picture from that. You know, you imagine an em- enemy that never physically yes. attacks. Yes. You don't get to build yes. that intelligence yeah, yeah, picture. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? So that, and I just thought, I just thought we're just bait. Yeah. Mm. We're just bait. And I'm just a number. And this is not what I joined for. I wanted to be at the, I felt like I was at the back end of the arrow. Yes. And I wanted mm. to be on the pointy yeah, yeah, end. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and I kind of thought, you know, I want to be in the special forces. That was a big dream of mine. Mm. Then we went off what to Iraq. You, what made you want to be in the special forces? You know what? I went. I went to the. Uh, it wasn't Rambo or anything like that, was it? I tell you, <laughs> was it Rambo? Or was it Rambo? <laughs> I tell you what. <laughs> you know what? When when I was a kid, I got caught with a shotgun. I stole a shotgun from from a uh, from a house, and I, I took it back. I was only fourteen years old. The shotgun was actually bigger than me. It was ridiculous. Really? So anyway, I had a solution to that. So I got it in the vice and I chopped it down. So it was about. I saw the, off. Yeah. I saw Holy it. shit! It was a beautiful shotgun as well. It was a yeah. shame. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's interesting because like the, um, you know, I did a very good job on it. My dad was like, 
we were very hands-on as kids, you know. Yeah. It was like Victorian dad. We were chopping wood, doing yeah. this, building. I learned to cut pipes with my dad, you know, yeah. plumbing and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. chopping the end of a shotgun off was like, um, you know, it's like uh, I was well, well versed in that skill. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I can remember when I got my little shotgun and, um, you know, obviously no one knew about it. And um, I, you know, I'd just seen Rambo. You know, I was 14 years old. Yeah. Just see 13 or 14 years old, 14 years old. And I saw Rambo and I was like, I got all the gear. I thought I was Rambo. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I got bandoliers. I got like a, a <laughs> massive knife that was bigger than my leg. It was dragging on the floor. <laughs> you know, it was ridiculous. And I used to go out at night, you know, thinking I was. Really? I was like, yeah, yeah. It was, it, was, it was a crazy time in my life. So although you but say that Rambo. Wasn't major that the wasn't that. The, the one thing that made me want to join the special forces was I saw in 1980 the SAS storm. The Iranian embassy, yes. in London. Yes. You know what I mean, and that's yeah, made for me. A movie about that reason, he didn't. Yeah, they? yeah, six days. Yeah, six yeah, days. That's it, yeah. Right. Uh, but for me, I mean, I think that was Maggie, Th Maggie, Maggie Thatcher was in power at that time, and I think it was great because usually they'd blanket off the front of that building so you couldn't see what was going yes. on. And she said, "No, I want to show the world how how good our special forces are." Really? So that's why it was all on TV. You saw yeah. everything. And that for me, I saw that, and it was the Falklands as well. And those yeah. two things, you know, seeing that as as I was growing up, that was, that was the things that really spurred, you know, that, that sort of sowed the seed. Yeah. And then I went to the careers office. I can remember going in there and I'd been in trouble with the law. Obviously you know, I got caught with a shotgun. Yeah. Um, and I just dodged, I went on remand, but I dodged, I didn't dodge. I just got away without a custodial sentence, yeah. which was really fortunate. Yeah. Um, and, um, and then from that point on 14 years old, you know, into my, into my, um, 14th year, I decided the military was for me. Yeah. And, um, so that was it. I was, I forgot the fucking whole point. And obviously you saying. can't go straight in the special forces. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. that, no, that was it. I, and, and then that normally yeah. keeps us straight. In this I was going, what the fuck was I talking yeah, about? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I get lost. I go down these alleyways. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> and my mum used to take me, you know, at that time, I'm, my mum was amazing. You know, a, a marriage had fallen apart. She was in trouble financially. Yeah. She was trying to keep the household together. There's me and my brother and sister. And then she, all, all of that stuff was going on. She knew that I needed support at that time. Mm -hmm. So she, you know, she, she really put some time in and made sure that energy of mine, which was, was misguided, yeah. had been misguided, was put yeah. into my fitness and everything else. So, yeah. And she used to take me to the careers office in Derbyshire and it was almost like a, a on a regular basis. And I, they kind of talked me out of, I could have joined at 16, yeah. but they said, look, because you got a criminal conviction, you'd have to take that into you had that would have to be on your records if yes. you go at 16 if you wait ah, till you're okay. 18 it's gone it's gone mm -hmm. so anyway i was like disappointed but you know I, I understood the point um i can remember going to the careers office there was um this royal navy um lady there and I, she sat down with me she said so if and i say if you pass the royal marines commando course mm -hmm. what do you want to do when you get in mm -hmm. and i opened the brochure and the other thing apart from the surfing on the beach. Pointed at the lady. <laughs> Pointed out, I want to do her. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, if you want to do her, you'll have to join the special forces. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No, no, no. That's enough. <laughs> so anyway, I opened the brochure on the centre page and it was the SBS. And it was a picture of a mini sub. Yeah. A mini submarine that the SBS pilot um, and there was a diver, a combat diver that had obviously left the submarine. It was a beautiful picture. And I yeah. said, I want to do that. Yeah. And she looked at me and she laughed and she went, oh, everybody wants to do that. <laughs> and she closed the brochure. Was that? And that for me, and that's, yes. that's, that's the, I don't know if that's probably not the first time, but that for me was like a red flag to a ball. Yeah. Some people, you know, there's two types of people in this world. There's people that see that and then they, they, they consume that doubt. Yes. Which stops them in their tracks. Or they'll have a fuck you. Yeah. Or have you a fuck you, I'm yeah. going to prove you wrong. That's my it's, little girl, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, though? Oh, I'm, not, I'm definitely a fuck you. you. Oh, mate, yeah, you are a fuck you. Yes. You've got to be, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, so that was it for me. You can't get Ollie Ollett in your podcast. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> um, so, uh, and that was it. That was, uh, that was like the that sowed the seed for me. And then, but then, you know, going back then to Northern Ireland, came back and then did, I, I did, um, uh, went off to desert storm, yeah. um, came back from there and I was like disillusioned. I was like, mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't, it wasn't enough. I wanted to be at war every day. It was unhealthy. You know what? The, 
another point here it was is an the adrenaline. Fact, yeah, it was an adrenaline. But the thing is, high. I was <clears throat> right. I joined, and this goes back to what you just said earlier. Actually, I fell in love with the image of being in the special forces. I fell in love with the image of being in the Royal Marines. You know, yes. I, I had this image and this perception of what it would be like and how I would feel yes. and how complete it would make me feel. Yes. And that would be my purpose. Yes. All right. So when I got into Royal Marines, it didn't connect for me. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, disillusion was about to leave. And then, um, I was six months away. You have to put 18 months notice into leave. And I was six months away from, from, um, being a civilian. Mm -hmm. And I went down, my brother passed out as a helicopter pilot down in Caldros. He was in the Royal Navy as a helicopter pilot. Mm -hmm. And I went down there to his pass out and my officer from Northern Ireland and desert storm, yeah. um, was at the pass out. His girlfriend was passing out in the same batch. Yeah. And uh, Bagsy Baker, absolute legend of a bloke. And he said, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm, I'm leaving. I've had yeah. enough. Yeah. And he says, no way. He says, he says, you know what? He said, when, when, um, when I served with you, he said, there was always something different about you. And I really, I really always thought that you had it in you to join the special forces. Yeah. He said, if you leave, you'll regret it for the rest of your life. Yeah. And those words changed me. Yeah. It was someone that I admired. <clears throat> and what happened? I joined the Royal, Royal Marines in this self confidence and 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 this. Isn't there not much belief. Is, is there not much positive feedback in the forces? There is, but the thing is, you know, it's it's almost like that. You know, you join as a young lad, and yes. and, and they knock the shit out of you. Yes. You know, what I mean, I joined, and then the first week I joined, I had my nose all smashed in. I was beaten up. I had to yeah. go to hospital, and you know, what I mean, it was like that wasn't in the brochure either. Yes. You know what I mean. <laughs> If I did, you know, I could imagine if that, that's what the boyfriend would have done if I'd done that chick on the beach. Well, but. imagine coming to a course and then getting a fucking bag put over your head. Well, exactly, and, mate. And then fucking babies crying in the ears for about two hours. Well, that's hours. where it stems from. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I, mean, I thought you were just going to do a fucking PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's those words that, that gave me one little inch of confidence, you know, cause I kind of, I thought special forces, cause I've been not my confidence had been yes. knocked. I'd lost a bit of self-worth and yes. self-belief. I thought no way could I do special forces. I mm -hmm. talked myself out of it, mm -hmm. but then seeing him, he then put, gave me that tiny little bit of confidence. Yeah. Yeah. I went back to camp, um, and I was down at pool actually where the SBS were based. I was just doing guard duties down there, serving my time out. Mm -hmm. And I went to see my sergeant who was in charge of me, and I'd turned into the worst soldier ever. Yeah. I mean, I was, wasn't turning up on time. I, my kit wasn't ironed. I've never I been a conformist. You know what? That's, what? that's the thing about 18 months' notice. Yeah. I don't want to be here. Yeah. So I'm going to stay here for 18 exactly. months. Yeah. Yeah. That, I've always thought that in workplaces where all you have to give is a month's notice to leave. I'm like, yeah. what? So I can fuck around for a month. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. Just You're so not you gonna know, get if the you best. ever leave, you can fuck straight off. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. That's it. <laughs> we are laying the foundation. Just don't yeah, turn in. Oh, well, month, just don't turn yeah. in. Yeah. But it is crazy, yeah. isn't it? No, it is crazy. Yeah. So, you know, and, 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 you know, I had no interest in being there. So yeah. I turned into, you know, I was not invested in my job whatsoever. Yes. And I went in to see him and I said, um, he said, what do you want? And I was like, I want to take my notice out to leave. And he went, what? I said, yeah. He said, why? I said, because I want to put in for special forces selection. Mm -hmm. And this was the second bloke or the second person that laughed at me. He, and he sat there laughing. It must've been like for five minutes. Just really? He was nearly fell off his chair, <laughs> you know? And he was like, I, he says, you know what? He says, because this is so comical. He says, I'm going to sign this. I'm going to, I'm going to let you do exactly what you want. Cause I'll see you back here in two weeks, two weeks yes. when you failed. Yeah. And I was like, he just, I oh, mean, I've got to away. thank him. Yeah. Like when you applied, was it, were you straight into the testing process? Or well, no, it was like a couple of months away. So yes. I had two months to train. Yes. Um, and um, so I didn't, you know, the heat was on. Yes. And uh, two months to train and, and then I was off. Yeah. So we signed, he signed everything and I never saw him again. Really? Very, I did see him again, but the next time I saw him was in a blue track suit, which is basically the SBS. You know what I mean? I was just like... Hey, girl. Fuck you. So no, what, what is the process from like very start to getting into the like because i'm I, I would imagine there's a certain amount of time you've got to serve in yeah well i think it's i think now i think it was back then but it's 18 months uh service minimum one operational tour then you can then you can uh put in a notice to 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 do special forces selection uh -huh. or sas selection as and is. then what is that type of training because <clears throat> one of my friends has just joined the marines and that, mm. is that the 32 week training no that's the 32 weeks is royal marines is royal marines yeah. and, and then, then the special forces is six months so that is basically <laughs> yeah and which is horrendous 
And, and you said you, you trained for that for two months. Yeah, I had two months. To, is that like again. optimal or is, would, you, is, would you normally have more? The thing is, more? yeah, there's, no, I mean, you'd normally have more, but a lot of people fail, you know, when doing something like this, they're overtrained. Mm. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. And then they get to do selection and before you know it, the first week they've got injuries. They've peaked yeah. too early. Yeah, peaked yeah, too yeah, early. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I yeah. mean? So a lot of people... I think it. I think it worked in my favor that I had two months. Yeah, you know what I mean? well, we had a UFC yeah. fighter on. He was yeah. the first fighter to fight on Fight Island. Yeah, and he said the shorter camp was better for me because I couldn't because he can't spar yeah. light. Yeah, he's a fucking. He's an animal. Yeah. yeah. So he said the shorter camp and just getting flown out to Fight Island was great for me because yeah. it was less time to get injured. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. there's a so, lot of that type of training that you're doing is a lot of time on the feet. I bet. As I would well. have had it. What it is? Imagine you stomping as well. You yeah. stomping with a heavy pack and all that. T- you know that type of training. Yeah. I mean that the, the pressure that puts on you. On your system, on your joints, and yeah. everything else. Yeah. So I mean, you you get smashed in the first two weeks across the Brecon Beacons. Yeah. You know, massive weight. The first thing you do. I mean, I turned up on day one. I was like one of three hundred and fifty, and I sat. Oh, I, I can remember looking. Honestly, I was like one of the youngest. I was twenty three years old, and I, I got off the the bus, and I went. I looked around, and I looked at all these guys, and I some some. I don't think I'm. I knew anyone as such, but I looked around, they looked like super soldiers. Yeah. These, these guys looked like they, they, they were the perception of the special forces already. Yes. A lot of them. So I looked your... around going, fucking hell. Mm. And I, I looked at me and I thought, I look like I got, you know, I got the, got off on the wrong stop. Yeah. And I thought, shit, where's that boss? I, was like, <laughs> I think if the boss was still there, I'd have got back on this it. This is the one, <laughs> these are the lads made in the lab. I think a lot of people thought I was the driver. But... <laughs> 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 so anyway I, and, and but you know and, and that seed of self-doubt started coming in again and it was mm. like you know that those internal messages that was we're just saying you're in the wrong place you're in the yeah. wrong place uh you know the, all these guys had tattoos they, they look strong and you know they're walking around with attitudes looking yeah. at me thinking you know look at this scrawny little shit <laughs> and then straight away you know it's like pretty much everyone check, checked off and then you're off you're mm. gone and the first one is up the penny van um, Dude, which that's is no fucking joke. Oh, I mate, think, yeah, have you been well, up there? Mate. Yeah, are 30, you running up there? 30 of my guys are doing it in January. Oh, really? Mm. Uh, it's not, uh, it's, it is a horrendous test. I mean, I've been a, back it's, a time it's and time total, again. Do you know what? Yeah. I don't know if it's a phys- it's more of a mental test, it is, it is. Your yeah. body will just keep going, yeah, but yeah, fucking well, your mind, mind gives up way before your body. Oh, mate, it's fucking insane, yeah, yeah. So anyway, it was like as soon as everyone off, and it's just a race, you know, you got 35 pound a kit, you got your weapon, water. And, um, you know, you're running up the hills and it's like bizarre. Yeah. And you've got 24 Ks. You've got to do it in four hours with full kit. And it was hideous. You know, I managed to get to the front of the pack. I wasn't the first, but I was in probably around the first five or 10. Yeah. On the way I back. Think some, I think when I did it, there was loads of people seeing a struggle downhill. And yeah. Was, it, it, was, yeah. It, was, it was weird. I was, I was fine downhill, yeah. but that yeah. fucking Jacob's ladder thing, bro. Yeah. Oh, mate, that is, that's yeah. not coming you know, up the actually, other way. Actually, you know the hardest part? What? The first 10 minutes. Yeah. Because there's no warm up, you just go like yeah, that. Well, that's I would have quit, yeah. but I knew someone. I, yeah. Honestly, I was like, this is not for me. Yeah. Again. Yeah, and yeah. Some, but someone was there that I knew. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm not quitting in front of him. No, no. <laughs> but that's the thing is, you know, that's that's the thing. I mean, it takes me now, now that I know how I my body works yeah. and performs, it takes me a, about a kilometre to get into it. Yeah. Before I start getting. Fucking but gnarly. that's the thing. That's why a lot of people give up because they don't understand that short term discomfort leads yes. to long term gains. Yes. Mm. You know yes. what I mean? And that's when with everything, that's an, a, a, like an analogy for life, isn't yeah. it? Like a lot of people, because it, in the in the immediate you know, in the short term, yeah. it gets tough and they're like, no, oh, I can't do this because yes. they, they then think that it's all going to be as yes. tough as that. Yes. Yes. They don't realise there's a there's a period you're going to get through and then it's going to start then you get into flow. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that was yeah. the case. So yeah. you know and, and that, that was it. But basically what had happened then, you know, I was then going up that hill, a steep hill, and some of these super soldiers that I'd seen were falling by the, actually falling, they were sat by the side of the track going, oh, shaking their heads going, oh, I can't go on. And yeah. I was like, have you seen Highlander? I have, yeah. You know what I mean? When yes. they chop the head off. Yes. And they, they well, I, yes. Don't, I don't know what they call it, but they feel the power. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, chop, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like that. Yeah. I was like that, you know, doing yeah. the old GT. Is that Arnie Schwarzenegger, right? No, 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 that's, that's not. It's, um, I think Sean Connery's in one, but there's a, yeah, there's a, I can't remember his name. It's so common, isn't it? Now. Yeah, I'm watch Islander. It now. But basically, they chop the enemy's heads off, and then they take their power from their soul. You know, it's like it's like yeah. gives them more power. Yes, mm-hmm. and that is like almost what happens. Seeing to people me. drop, seeing the people that I thought were better than me yes. drop. You know, and I should say, oh, Just mate, come on, carry on, and they'd be like, no, no, no. Yeah. And then once you once that's happened, you know they're not going to carry on. Yes, it's almost like you're taking their power, and that yeah. gives you the confidence Amazing. and power to keep yes. on going. And that's that. what that was yeah. it. Yeah. And those little chips gave me the confidence to keep on going. Did the penny fan that first day, and 
yeah, by the time I got back, I thought maybe you do deserve to be here. Yeah. You know, and then second day you're doing the same thing for two weeks, you yeah. know, different, different, different uh, length of, of yomps yeah. and uh, different weights of kit, but it's, yeah. it's hideous. And people are, people are dropping every day. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, uh, and then you go off to the jungle and that's hideous six weeks in there. Probably the most luxurious item is a toothbrush and you do, really? you know what I mean? It's just like constant. You, you, the, you get in there day very quickly. Your body's starting to rot and you can smell your body rot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Your that's feet, just because it's so wet all the time. It's just damp. It's yeah. just damp all the time. Yeah. You know, you get trench foot, your feet, you know, you just stink. Yeah. Hardest part of that, I tell you, is it's hideous is because you, from the moment you wake up in the morning, you're absolutely ringing wet. Yes. You know what I mean? Sweat, everything. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're thrashing you navigation. I mean, if anyone's tried, you know, people have nav problems navigating around the fucking city. You want to try a jungle? <laughs> mate, I mean, that's mate, a headache. Sometimes, sometimes I drive from home to the office and I end up in my old office. I'm not even kidding. You ever done that? I moved to the house and drove to the wrong house. Like, what the fuck am I doing? Here? Yeah, mate. Fucking... That's muscle memory, isn't it, boy? <laughs> it is. But um, so yeah, and you just constantly thrash. You're doing a lot of weapon drills out there, you know. Yeah. So you you a lot of shooting and you know, moving around a lot. Yeah. So you're stinking wet, and then at night it's absolute luxury because great thing about the jungle is about six o'clock it goes pitch black and you can't operate in the jungle at night. Yeah. So from that point about six seven o'clock, you know, in, in pitch black darkness. Then you wait till it's dark. You're getting a sort of all round defense. Yeah. You wait till it's dark. Yeah. And then in the pitch black, you set up all your hammocks and your overhead cover, yeah. which is quite a bit of a skill in itself. Yeah. How long does that take? So how, like what, how, six to, weeks to, in the jungle. No, how long does it, how long does it take for you to set up camp? Set up each camp. Night? I mean, initially, you know, it's, it's a bit of a trick, you know, you have to look cause you're doing it literally in the dark. Yeah. Um, but then you've done it. You're doing it within 15 minutes. Once set you've got the whole lot. Yeah. And then, and then what you, the beauty of that is you set everything up and then into your, into your backpack, you pull out your dry kit. Yeah. Mm. And I'm telling you, there's no better feeling than taking off that wet shit. <laughs> and then you put on this dry stuff and you've got talcum powder. You shove that down your nuts and you're like, <laughs> oh, fucking heaven, honestly. And it's like, but then the opposite of that, the next morning you have to you get up, up and before, sweating. before, um, before first light, you have to have everything packed away and back in all round defense. Yeah. So as soon as the sun comes out, yeah. you're ready for an attack yes. because that is the most likely time of attack. Yeah. And mm -hmm. this and the other. Yeah. But the thing you have to do before that, you have to wake up in the in darkness and that takes a bit, you know, your body clock switches on and yeah. you just wake up naturally 15 minutes before. Yeah. And, um, and then you have to take off that beautiful dry kit yeah. and you have to reach in your bag. As soon as you open the bag, the ammonia hits oh, you in the face, shit, yeah. the stink. And then you have to get that wet, yeah. moldy kit Mate, out. Do you know what? That ammonia on. thing, I talk about this all the time when we train jujitsu. Yeah. What I've never washed my gear ever. My wife always washed it. And yeah. I went to wash it once. I was like, Leslie, the cat has pissed all over the gear. <laughs> <laughs> she said, it always smells like that. That's what the smell is, ammonia. Yeah. yeah. Right. Ammonia. It's oh, right, isn't it? It's Disgusting. Uh, and I can remember then it was like, you know, I had to tell myself it's every day. You didn't have a washing machine, did you? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <we> <laughs> Sergeant. Or a wife. <laughs> or, can you just watch this for his eye? Yeah. Checking you. Yeah. yeah. Call in the this. wife. Call in the wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But um, and then you have to put it on. And I was, I can remember every morning, every day, I used to have to go through this like mental brainwashing. I was going, I fucking love these Armanis. I look <laughs> so fucking awesome. And yeah. I, you know, it's just to get amazing. through it. Yes. It was honking, absolutely honking. <laughs> uh, and that was it for six weeks. You know, you're doing that six weeks. You yeah. lose a lot of people then. Yeah. Once you've kind of got through that, you you kind of, um, they, they assume that everyone that's got through the jungle is pretty much, they've got a solid team of people yes. that are likely to then make it through to the end. Yeah. And then you go into your skills training, your demolitions, helicopter drills, all kinds of communications, yeah. Morse code, blah, all this. And then the last thing you do is the escape and evasion yeah. across the hills. And, uh, you know, it's pretty much set, you know, we, we got to that point and it was like, Is that when you do the interrogation shit and that, yeah, the yeah. interrogation that you've done, <laughs> mate, you know what I remember about that? <laughs> yeah. The, the guy, he, I'm pretty sure you're blonde here. Said he, I basically did everything he said. He said, it was Riley. He said, open up your fingers. Yeah. He said, you play the piano. I was like, no. And I was exhausted at this point. He fucking smashed them on the table. Then, then he said, put your hands on the table, pull your pants down around your ankles and I did <laughs> <laughs> this is extra curriculum I, did I didn't know about <laughs> it <laughs> he said spread your hands on the table spread your legs and pull your pants down around your ankles and I did <laughs> I reckon he's making <laughs> it <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean that Dean told us yeah. he said 
you're the first person that's ever done that. I was like, well, I never, I never even invited <laughs> when in Rome, when in, when in Rome, Rome <laughs> mate, he had no uh, idea what he was letting himself <laughs> in for. <laughs> did he? Dude, Take your watch off, mate. Will you? <laughs> Dude, Car uh, keys. Uh, oh, so you didn't, that wasn't part of the deal. No, mate, maybe I didn't just, know anything about that. Not on my watch. That's <laughs> <Maybe> <laughs> your double arsehole. Mate, that was, that was for the... Uh, Aye, mad. Yeah. So, so, Ollie, um, one thing that I've wanted to ask you is, what's, what are some of the maddest shit you've ever seen in the, when you're in the SBS? To be honest, mate, I, I'm, I'm quite honest with this. I mean, yeah. you know, a lot of my time spent in, in the Special Forces was, for me, a little bit disappointing. Yes. And the reason for that was, you know, is the fact that, that times are quiet. You know, we didn't have the Afghanistan stuff. We didn't have the, the kind of wars that, you know, the Afghanistan or the Iraq stuff, you know, at that time. And it was pretty quiet. So that was a lot of my frustration, to be yeah. quite honest. Yeah. But, um, you know, some of the operations that we did do, and they few and far between, but they were, they were fucking, they were amazing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, I can remember we hit a few drug ships. Mm -hmm. And um, I can always remember we'd, uh, it was the first job ever. And it was like, this was when I knew, knew I was in the special forces, a past selection. Yeah. And then we used to have a pager, you know, the pager would go off. And a lot of the time you'd know if a code came up, it was just a drill. You yeah. just had to phone up and say, da, da, da. Yeah. and this time it, it was a Friday afternoon. Fucking would be, wouldn't it? <laughs> 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 I mean, terrorists and shit, they need to stop working. They weekends, do I, they've they got do no I, respect I, whatsoever. I, they need to have the kind of respect COVID's got at the moment. I, yeah. 10 PM. <laughs> 10 PM. 10 PM. 10 PM cut off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hard That's days, hard days yeah, work. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Nine. Same as me, uh, same as me. So um, the page went off and it was the code. And you're like, fuck, it's yeah. a real one. It's a proper job. Back into camp, briefing, straight on a helicopter, straight up, forward operating base, going through briefs and everything. Ships coming into waters. Mm -hmm. It's got loads of drugs on board. Armed um, uh, enemy on board, blah, blah, blah. This and the other. It's fucking brilliant. You know, and this yeah. for me was like, whoa, this is, this is what I joined for. Yeah. You know, all in black kit, black Isn't balacaba. Isn't that mad, Mark? Do you think that's mad? That's crazy. Because a lot of shit. other people would be like, fuck. Do you know what? Yeah. <laughs> fuck. I'm that's not doing crazy. that. that <laughs> but they say that about you, Max, a fighter. And other yeah. people would be like, there's, there's two ways to frame that, isn't it? Yeah. And it's, I, I think about this all the time. It's the same physical feeling, mm. isn't it? Yeah. Exciting and that, that yeah. shit in your pants is the same yeah, thing. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's yeah. how you frame it, though, isn't yeah, it? it yeah. is. Do you know what? All that's running through my head right now. What? Have you played much Call of Duty? <laughs> no. Haven't Call, 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 <laughs> Call of Duty 4, there's a, there's a mission called Wet Work and it's on a ship and that's all I'm imagining you right now, blacked out, ready to fucking lapel it down onto the ship. That's, that's all. That was it. Lapel it. What's that called? Lapel. I'm thinking of your... I'm James Bond. I'm thinking of your fucking, your mic. Your lapel mic. Yeah, so that was it. Yes. Oh my yeah, God! Yeah, I'm in rebellion. That's sick. I Cod four. Yeah. Cod so four. basically, we we got up and we got over the over the target. The target's moving at sea. Yeah. We're in the helo. We're the helo team. We've got boats coming up the back, and um, I can remember looking down. On, we're on a fast rope, so it's it's not repelling. It's a fast rope. So basically, you're not even attached to a fast rope. It's just your hands. You know what I mean? That grip. You know, it's, yeah. it's that on there. See there. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that. Yeah. So you're not even attached to it. Yeah. And you've got all your weapons on, you've got your grenades, you've got, you know, you're all in black, you've got your fucking, uh, you've got your everything, you've got all the weight, your body armor, the whole lot. Mm -hmm. And then you throw yourself onto this, and you're looking down, right? And the bridge of the ship, because the sea is so rough, it's like a pendulum. Yes. Ooh. Massive pendulum going, it's, it's like going from the 12 o'clock down to the, almost, it looked like, like the nine o'clock position, yeah. then back over to the three. Yeah. And like, so you've got to time yourself like getting from the helicopter, sliding down the rope and making yes. sure that you hit the shit yeah. on the 12 <laughs> o'clock. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was, it was like, you know, and you're having to slow yourself down and it was like, but you're coming down fast yeah. and like, you just have to make sure you land on the bridge as it swings over the other way. It was like yeah. mental and the helicopter pilots trying to keep it on track. And then we all got down on the, onto the, onto the um, bow of the ship. And um, our objective was straight into the, into the door on the, on the first level, yeah. clear all the decks. Yeah. And I can remember, um, <clears throat> first of all, I can remember at the top, because when you're in the helicopter, you put like your balaclavas on mm -hmm. and um, everyone puts the balaclavas on and you get ready, you know, when it's two minutes to go in, everyone finally checks each other off. We're in. Yeah. And then when you're down on the ship, obviously there's lights and everything. And I can remember we, we stack up on the door and, and when you stack up on the door, it's fucking massive anxiety. You know, right. you don't know what's behind, whether it's, you could be the explosive devices, people, yeah. you know, could, you could be walking into a wall of bullets. Yeah. So anyway, you wait for the squeeze from the back. The doorman opens the door. You go raging through the door 
And I'll tell you what, this door opened and it, at that point it went, boom, hit us, fucking smashed us in the face. The smell of fucking cannabis. Really? Yeah. That's a And it was, smell. honestly, it had been in there, it's been in this place for days and days and yeah. days. Yeah. And you know what I mean? I just looked in and there was blocks. I think there were 100,000 quid each blocks just Ooh. everywhere, scattered all over the place. Wow. So we all stormed through the door and we're like that. Fucking hell. <laughs> then next minute we start giggling. Really? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, we start really? giggling. We're like, fucking hell. It's, like, it's just laughing. And anyway, the sergeant, our sergeant then comes bursting through the door and he's like, what the fuck's going on? You know, we've got a fucking ship to take down. Yeah. Get serious, lads. But the thing is, he put his balaclava on and when he put it on, he put one of his eyepieces over his nose yeah. and the other one was over one eye. <laughs> You know what I mean? So we looked yeah, at yeah, him. Yeah. We were already laughing anyway. Yeah. We were just a fucking bag, <laughs> bag of shit on the floor, just laughing at him. Just, you know what I mean? We're supposed to be taking this shit yeah. down. <laughs> we had to really square ourselves away. Yeah. And it was like going down the corridors, sniggering. Anyway, yeah. we, we took the ship and then, and then uh, we always hit at dawn. So you've probably, you know, just wait just before first light. Yeah. By the time we first light came up, we'd taken the ship. Yeah. And, um, and it was, it what was taking the ship look like. Uh, well, oh, basically, you've got you've got control of the ship. Yeah, you, there was no, you know, we, we didn't. The basically nine times out of ten, we hit these ships, and the enemy just didn't even know advanced. they didn't even know we were on board. Oh, really? You know, what I mean, the, the boats come up because of the noise of the sea and everything else. Yeah. Even with a helo above, yeah. you know, a lot of time they don't even hear that inside. Really? Yeah. So they absolutely shit their pants and they just fucking don't do anything. They freeze these big hard gangsters that yeah. I used to look at thinking, fucking hell, if I yes. saw him down the you park, fucking, you fucking kill me. But, um, you know what I mean? And then they just shit themselves. So we took control of the ship yeah. uh, on that job, um, detained all, you know, everyone was in like plastic cuffs. Yes. And then we wait for like the customs to come in and take in and, and then we go. But it was, it was amazing. Like the, the Chinooks come in, which is the double, propped helos came in and basically lifted us off, you know, lifted our boats out of the water yeah. with us in it. Oh, and we, shit, and we really? went off into the sunset. It was fucking amazing. Yeah. You know, I was like, fucking this is sick. the fucking, this do, you is know, do you know, do you know, do you know, one thing I wanted to ask you was, I was reading, um, <clears throat> your new book battle ready, by the way. Yeah. Congratulations on Thanks, that. Mate. Thanks. And I was reading about, um, when you are, I think you were in, living in Thailand or something. Yeah. And you're having these panic attacks. Yeah. And there was a lot about panic attacks and I'm, Part of me is like, because I've suffered from panic attacks. A few guys that, that we've had on have suffered from panic attacks. Mm. Tyson Fury being one of them. And I'm like, how can you, someone like you, mm. and this is this is going to be powerful for anyone that's listening. If yeah. somebody that like you, who's been in fucking Northern Ireland, who's been through a fucking, who's done all the shit that yeah. you've done, is having panic attacks mm. in, yeah. like, for nothing really, wasn't it? Yeah. Like, how have you managed that? In fact, let me ask you a better question. Why do you think that was happening then, but wasn't happening to you when you were? Because a lot of the, when, when I was having those panic, panic attacks later on, there was a lot more going on. You know, basically we go through life compressed. We like a pressure cooker. Yeah. And by that time in my life, so much had gone on. There was a, there was a path of fucking absolute destruction behind me. Mm. You know what I mean? Relationships, marriages and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. I was drinking too much yeah. drugs, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And for me, at that time, you know, I started having those serious panic attacks yeah. and I was getting to the stage in life where I was just, I was looking back at my life thinking, holy fuck, your life is just mayhem. Yeah. Your life is just absolute mayhem. And it's, that started to spin me out at times. Yeah. I mean, at one point when I did start having those panic attacks was actually fucking in Vegas when I was about to get married to someone I didn't really know. And, um, <laughs> and I'll tell you what that was. That was for me. I was in, I was in, I was taught or trained to be in flow and in comfort in chaos. Mm. You know what I mean? Yes, and that do, for yes. me, you know, when I'm that, I call it peace in war. Yeah. You know what I mean? That for me is my peace was in war. Yes. You know what I mean? That's how I was trained. That's how yeah. we're trained. But when it came to all, I found it so much harder to deal with that normal everyday to day yeah. stuff yeah. and the pressures and everything of, of normal day life yeah. that, you know, a lot of times I used to run back to a war zone. You know what I mean? When I was, when I was a contractor yeah. in Iraq, yeah. my freedom, my peace was going back to a war zone. Yes. You know what I mean? It was, it was, the, it was the, the white noise on the outside of war that I couldn't handle. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? And that for me was, was really having those panic attacks and just, you know. Yeah. That was and I wanted to mention that. this because I think um, 
I think that, that a, a lot of people listening with our guys that have suffered from depression, guys that have been diagnosed with bipolar, people with um, panic attacks, anxiety stuff. And I think a lot of guys actually, they feel like they're on their own. And then if yeah. somebody like, that's one of the reasons why I wanted Tyson on, because they're like, well, mm. hang on, if they're the heavyweight champion of the fucking yeah. world, who's fucking beat... Mm. Vladimir Klitschko, like had back then, can yeah. suffer like this, and then if somebody like you who've mm. done who've done what you'll, you've done in your career can suffer from it, it's like, well, actually, yeah, it's not. I'm not on 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 my own. But the second piece of this is, I want to. How have you got a handle on that? What, what have been some of your things to get? How well, you get a handle on that panic attack. I mean, thing? I've learned a lot since those days. I mean, certainly for me, you know, when I came back, and the, and the, really the basis for that book was in 2015 when I knew I needed to make some changes. Mm. You know, and there was, there were, I was, I was, and, and a lot of that, you know, this stuff about the anxiety was because I was in a repeat habit loop yeah. and that was a repeat habit loop of destruction. Yeah. And, you know, I talk about that a lot in the book about, you know, we are, we are creatures of habit. Yeah. That's just the way we're wired. Yeah. Our minds want us to do what we did yesterday and the day before, yeah. because as far as, um, uh, evolution of the species is concerned yeah. it knows what we did yesterday and the day before has kept us alive until today mm. it doesn't give a shit if you're happy or sad whether it's a good event or not yeah. it just knows it wants to keep on doing yeah mm. what we did yesterday so for me my repeat habit loop was you know i already have, had these aspirations to really sort of have my own business do this i knew it was in me i knew i had this uh, ability for greatness you know i had a benchmark of joining the special forces yeah. which helped me a lot um but for me, it was that repeat habit loop. I knew I needed to break out yeah. of that. And that was where that term comes from, the short-term discomfort for long-term gain. Yeah. You know, that is the ability to break out of that habit loop yeah. and, and to suffer that short-term discomfort. No, it leads to... And what would you say gain. was your... What, what, the, 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 there were probably several, but what was your, your pivotal moment for kind of... For doing that? Yeah. Well, you know what? I woke up in... I was in Australia at the time. I'd done all kinds of stuff. Um, and... Um, my job was coming to a close while I was working in oil and gas, you know, a job that, um, you know, I was in a, in an office in Australia that was coming, it was coming to a natural close. Something was you were in me. an office. I was working in an office. Yeah. But it was, it was absolutely hilarious because for two years I never did any work. I went to the gym three times a day yeah. and because the, the management structure was so bad, mm -hmm. you know, there was no team meetings, no nothing. There was no direction whatsoever. And that's yeah. really, that's a, that's the first place I got the idea for Breakpoint. Really? Yeah, because I knew that I worked in a massive organisation where people could, could just get lost mm. and not, you know, there, there was there was such a lack of productivity yeah. lost in a massive organisation. And I just thought how good it'd be able to put some military processes into a structure like that to make to really streamline their teamwork, streamline their synergy between yeah. everyone. And, and that, yeah. that was the birth of Breakpoint. Yeah. You know, mm. their bad management yeah. of me... So it's almost those two things probably went together then, eh? Yeah. So breakpoint came as you yeah. kind of reached your breakpoint almost. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I came back to, you know, and, and again, for me, you know, I'm a creative person. I know that. And, um, but I, I know my strength isn't sitting down doing spreadsheets and computers and, you know, that's just not my strength. Yes. But that's what you need to do when you start a business. Unfortunately, you need to push into, you need push into that you need stuff you don't like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, but for me, I came back and I thought, I want to start Breakpoint. Yeah. I came back to the UK with absolutely nothing. And yeah. I thought, I want to start Breakpoint. And I knew I had to step into that discomfort mm. of embracing that kind of boring mm. stuff. I've come up with loads of ideas. I've had so many ideas for businesses. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I've always got, you know, great idea, great. And it gets to doing the boring stuff. I'm like, yeah, oh, that's a shit idea. Yeah. Mm. No, just because yeah. I don't want to do the boring stuff. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? But this time, you know, when I came back, it was like, I'm starting Breakpoint. That's it. Yeah. I was, something in me was so do you driven. Think that, do you think that was, do you think that kept your focus from going back to the old shit? hundred percent. That was one driving force that kept me moving forward. And I came back and put myself into a boot camp for two months. Fortunately, I, got a spare house my brother as a pilot you know i was like hey bro i'm coming back home and he's like oh i'm going to fucking malaysia <laughs> yeah yeah you know, I, think he, I think he actually went to malaysia as opposed to <laughs> but what that did is left a spare house yeah. you know what i mean there's always a silver lining and, yeah. and that for me i was like right i'm going to spend two months now and i knew the only way you know we, we we're born into this world as creative beings you know with uh dreams and and goals of things we want to achieve yeah. society takes control of that you yeah. go to school all that stuff is programmed out here they're getting yeah. re you ready for society yeah. your dreams get crushed yeah. and i knew that 
years and years of this negative programming, I had to get through that. I had to change the blueprint in my subconscious. And the only way to do that was put myself through um, a, a boot camp where I had no distractions, no TV, no newspapers, no alcohol, no drugs, no nothing that would contaminate what's going on in my head. And yes. I knew, and, and I put myself into the processes that I now do to this day. And that's detailed in that book. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, love it. But break point. And, and listen, that was 2015, 2016 time. Yeah. It hasn't, it can't, that can't have all just been it plain sailing. I started a business. I won, right? That's, an, that's never, <clears> is it? Well, no, it's not. Especially, you know, at that time as well, I was in that house and I was, you know, I, I couldn't get any money. You know, the easy thing for me was, would have been to get a loan, get loads of money, yeah. throw it at the business yeah. and, you know, buy the websites and this, that and the other. But yeah. It wasn't going to be as easy as that. You know, I had no I had no credit rating whatsoever in the UK. I actually had to borrow a credit card off my mum. It was quite pathetic at <laughs> 43. Uh, it's funny because my brother was calling me. He says, because uh, at that time I was, just before that, I was doing a little bit of work in London, chasing some some villains around, you know, doing some surveillance work and some villains in London yeah. and, and, and all sorts. And even one of the guys... This very nasty Russian guy. Had, yeah. He had a shark tank in his proper James Bond stuff. Really? In his office, yeah. In his office. And um, I was telling my brother this. And my brother's always, you know, he's, he's been the, 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 you know, not the straight, straight one, but he's always been the, the more sensible one out of the two of us. And I was like, you know, I had no money or anything when I came back. And he's yeah. like, I said, oh, I'm doing this, that, and the other jut. And he says, you know what you're like? I said, what? He says, he says you're like that bloke, you know, born. And I went, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He says, "Yeah, but you're broke born. <laughs> <laughs> broke born mountain. Broke born. <laughs> I, love it. I like that. There, I love we, it. There's broke, some mileage in that, mate. Broke born <laughs> But um, and it was at that point, you know, at that point, that's when I had, couldn't get any money yeah. and I couldn't get anything. Yeah. You know, at that point, I'd asked my brother to my brother lend me lend me a, a couple of grand. Yeah. And it was at that point, you know, I was like, well, I'm going to have to try something that, you know, what can I try? So I thought I've got to give this." positive thought i've got to give that some kind of that's all i had yeah you know what i mean so i thought uh, I, you know my ego was saying that's a load of bullshit it doesn't work you know it's you know laughing at me almost yes but i thought you know just be non-judgmental let's get through this let's let's put some processes so i visualized i put a plan into place i wrote everything down i used yep. to listen to podcasts every day and everything i was doing was like really just trying to change that blueprint. Yeah. I wrote a contract to myself for what I wanted to achieve. I said, you know, put a date on that contract yeah. contract. Yeah. And when I started reading, that, I used to read out, it's like a proper contract, like an official one. I'd signed it and everything. It was like, by this date, I will have achieved um, setting up my business break point. Yeah. You know? And it's, when I started reading, that, I used to, I, I could hear myself, my ego and that thousand person audience. We think we've got around us laughing at you going, you are a tit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which, <laughs> You know what I mean? And I was agreeing with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And at that point, you know, I got through that sort of bit of discomfort. And then yeah. I went, right, try doing it in the mirror. So you're telling yourself what you want to achieve. Yeah. I did that and it was even worse. I looked at myself and you went, you what look like fuck? a tit. Yeah. You know what I mean, you, you're not only a tit, you look like one as well. Yeah. And I was, and then I was like, oh, this is stupid. Then I thought I stopped and I went, hold on a sec. If you can't look at yourself and tell yourself what you want to achieve, how can yeah. you ever expect to achieve it? Mm. You know what I mean? And that was the mm. one thing that made me go through that discomfort of going. Yeah. Yeah. Da, 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 da. And then before I knew it, I was doing it off, you know, without looking at the piece of paper and sitting talking to myself. Yeah. And that is such a, you know, what it's like me, you know, yeah. you, know, you know what I think that's like, and it's very cheesy and very memorable. It's like mm. casting a spell. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you yeah. see it like that, it's yeah. casting a spell. I remember I was on a podcast, another woman's podcast. Once. Well, that's why they call it spelling. Is spell it? Spell. Wow. Yeah. Well, she it's said this, she said this to me. I love this. She went, your words are your wand. Yeah. I was like, wow. That's yeah. all but cheesy, a bit hippie-ish, but I like mm. it makes a fucking ton of sense. Yeah. Because when you talk, even your mind, you're casting a spell yeah. on yourself. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're almost hypnotizing yeah. yourself with your own you bullshit. Are, absolutely. And that's why, that's why it's so important writing stuff down. When you actually write, you do a physical action of the things that are in your mind. That has so much power. Mm. I think there's actually, I think somebody told me she was doing a degree in fucking psychology. She mm. said there's actual evidence. Yeah that something changes in your brain mm. when you put it on paper. Yeah. I must find out what that is. Yeah. Cause it, that, that 
Although there was also a study done where people... Have you ever, ever heard about that study where they said they did a study where people who wrote their goals down achieved them later in their life and that? That was actually proved never to be true. Mm. But that scientific fact, that apparently it's a scientific fact now, if you start writing shit down, it's in your mind. Yeah. It changes neural pathways in mm. your brain and that. Yeah, yeah. Which makes, a, for me, it makes a lot of fucking sense. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah absolutely. So so Breakpoint was originally, and, and still is, was a corporate thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, but that point, you know, the point, you know... When I was in that boot camp, I fucking just finished that. It was like, it was getting to the point where, um, you know, I was thinking, fucking hell, this stuff doesn't work. And I was like, sh- I was almost shouting some days going, give me a sign that this stuff works. I'm mm. not wasting my time. Yeah. You know, my family was starting to say, hey, man, you know, come on, you, you're you going to have to. I'm know. wondering who the fuck Matt is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I fucking, I'll let that slip. I'll let that slip. Yeah, this other this bloke. Mad, yeah. Mad born, yeah, 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 Matt Matt born. Born. <laughs> Matt born. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway yeah i was like going you know i was, I was telling myself and, and then family would start to say you know you know get, you're gonna have to get yourself a job you know some of my family was saying forget about break point you know you need to you need to do what you guys do and go back to a war zone yeah and i was starting to think Ugh. you know what i mean and then i started to lose a bit of passion for what i was doing yeah you know, and I had to really fight against that. And then all of, you know, I can still remember the call to this day. You know, and then all of a sudden when I was thinking this stuff doesn't work, yeah. you know, I've got a phone call, a phone call from Foxy and he's like, mate, you know, that stuff we're looking to do with Breakpoint. He said, do you want to do that? Th- How did you know Foxy? Foxy? I knew Foxy from when I served. We served together. Oh, shit. Okay. You know, there's a big gap. Um, I didn't see Foxy for 13 years, but shit. You know, when I left, he then, you know, he, he, his career really took off then. Yeah. Yeah. So we knew, you know, we were like best mates. And, um, you know, he's he's like, you know, that's, sh- um, you know, do you want to do what we are talking about doing with Breakpoint? Do you want to do that on TV? And I went, are yeah. you kidding? So we're, we were looking, you know, we had a great idea, no exposure. Yeah. I was like, wow. And it was like, almost for me, I said, I thought he was down the pub. Yeah. And I was like, oh, Foxy, where are you? I'll come join you. And he's like, no, no, mate. I says, I'm with the production company now. They want to talk to you. Yeah. So anyway, that was the conversation that led to where we are, to, you know, where, where we are with the TV show. That yeah. was the platform. But for me, when I look back at that, you know, you know, I, I, all my visualizations were about me and Foxy being on the stage, yeah. being on a big stage with a massive audience, yeah. talking about our experiences, this, that, and the other, and how powerful that would be. Yeah. And it was almost like, you know, it didn't deliver to me little wins. I was so intensive and so disciplined about my uh, my processes in that boot camp, yeah. they delivered to me something massive. And that that stage and that platform I talk about was me and him on telly. Yeah, you know, and that for me was the gift from the gods. Yeah, it was, it was, mm. it was yeah. Really, yeah. Know, and that changed everything. Yeah, and then you've obviously actually been on the stage because we saw you last year, which we thought was fucking great. By yeah, way. amazing. Hey, oh, up in Gateshead. In, in Gateshead. Uh, yeah, I, obviously. I was, I was telling same. Laura, mate. I was telling Laura, we were sitting there, and you know, because I've been to a few of the lads' as things, yeah. and yours was dramatic stars <laughs> and I, obviously I'd been oh, a, were you having flashbacks mate yes so I said to him because you have the you had the you had the yeah. there was music on there was noise it was very yeah. dramatic at the start yeah. and there's a fucking torture I'm saying to him I said don't let that fucking torture it us mate because I with you mate you never know what's going to fucking happen yeah. I was thinking fucking hell I'll be doing push ups with my underpants mate, on the stage I've missed a trick if, there if you get to me no, I, did. I, I miss, was like don't fucking I'll let you know next time get me oh, and anyway I'm sitting there mate but obviously it ended up going on that tour thing which was yeah. fucking amazing mate we we, yeah. we had a we had a great night didn't we yeah it was yeah, so how was that yeah, no, that was a matter. Actually, to be quite honest, Gateshead was probably one of the best. I'm not just saying that because you're here, mate. Yeah. It was, yeah. it was one of the best ones. And that venue's a fucking great venue. Venue's a great it? venue. Yeah. It, it was great, but the thing is, I mean, for me, it was something I didn't embrace initially because, yeah, it wasn't something I, I was happy about taking on. But I really enjoyed it, and I had to add that bit of a. Yes. You know what I mean? I couldn't just stand there going, oh, no, no, I'm this well, you're like um, a pop, uh, Death yeah. by PowerPoint. Yeah, yeah, yeah and exactly. That's exactly. what I thought I was getting my yeah, yeah. break yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I couldn't, I couldn't be just standing up saying, oh, you know, like a, I had to make it something more. And that's why I did yes. the whole thing at the start, you know, which gave it a bit of an edge of break point and also similar to the TV show. Yeah. You know, it's, it, for me, it was about everything I do is about giving people something back. And I think that's what the TV is giving us. And it's given us the responsibility and the duty of care to actually use our exposure for some good. Mm. You know, not it's not about stroking egos. I've got yeah. no interest in doing that. Yeah. Uh, in fact, quite the opposite. Yeah. But, you know, I do think, you know, and that's why everything we do, everything we do at Breakpoint, the tour, was about me trying to get people to understand that they, that they have so much power. Yes that they're not using, mm. yeah. you know what I mean? And to get them onto the, the goal setting class and all that kind of things. And just to get them start to think, to, you know, because people, society has created this bunch of people that just, 
they don't make their own tracks. They follow footprints. Yes. You know what I mean? There's no one that is hard. There's not a lot of people now. Well, the worst part is the following footprints that are printed on a fucking sticker now on the floor. <laughs> exactly. You know I mean? right. Yeah, yeah. Where the fucking stand yeah. now. You know what? You know what makes me laugh about now is like, you know, when I was at school and you must have had this said to you, you know, when you're at school and the teacher comes up and you've done something wrong and you go, he made me do it. Yeah. And the teacher goes, well, if he told you to jump off a cliff, you wouldn't do it, would you? <laughs> I think that needs addressing. I do too. Dude. Then, do you know what? Day, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If it was my wife, it would be different because I probably would have to. I probably would have to. Uh, uh, but I mean, it's, you know, at the moment, it's like people need to stand up and understand their power, but it's not their mm. fault. It's the fact that people, you know, they, they've got the thumb heavily pushing, push, pushing them down. Yeah. yeah. And I think I it's think a lot of people, you know, I think a lot of people just don't know where to fucking start. No. Do you know what I mean? They don't. They, uh, they, they, I think there's a lot of people waking up now to the fact that actually, do you know what? Yeah, I've created this situation for myself. But, yeah. but like, where do I fucking start? Yeah. So what would your advice be there? The thing is, I mean, you've got to identify with it. You've got to, a lot of times when you're in that situation, I think this is the biggest mistake people make is the fact when people aren't in a place that they want to be, yes. they start looking at people that are in the place that they'd mm. like to be. Then they start comparing. And yes. that different vibration yep. is too far a gap to even achieve. So yep. what that then turns into is resentment. Yeah. And that resentment is just their own internal energy that yes. will never get them I mean, anywhere. The thing is, is also, you think we were talking about anxiety and excitement before. There's yeah. two ways to look at that. Someone will look at it and be like, oh, I can never do that. And there's no mm. fucking And some people will be like, how the fuck do I do that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it's the same thing. And that's what people, you know, it's all about. We it's keep, the same thing. I'm like, how the fuck it. can I do that? Reframe it. Yeah. Just reframe it. Fear and excitement are very similar. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like a lot of people going on stage can't, oh, I can't do it. I can't do public speaking. Oh, I was horrendous when I first started. But the thing is, it's just about reframing it. If you, you, you know, I'll free, reframe this, man. I love because yeah, I, I get that as well. And yeah. I've spoken on big stages, yeah. and I'm like, that's my body making yeah. sure I've got the energy I need to put on a great show. Yeah, or yeah. it's my mind just reminding me to do a good fucking job. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's it. That's that's. I'm I'm pretty good at reframing. What are some of the tools yeah. that you use? Then is it just a natural thing, or do you got have you got any tools that you go to? Probably well, I think cool. a lot of it, I mean, a lot of it is about confidence in what you're talking about, isn't it? So, practice. Yeah, and, pra and practice. practice because it a lot put you in a war zone if you haven't fired a gun. Yeah, no, exactly, yeah. exactly. And the fact of the matter is, you know, I, we teach a lot about people about um, anxiety and uh, did we teach that to you about breathe, recalibrate, deliver? Yes. Did, yeah. Yes. So that, I mean, that breathing patterns is such an essential part of trying yeah, to Yeah, that's how fucked yeah. up my anxiety was yeah. when I went there. One, I tried to quit within 30 seconds. Yeah. And then I had to walk through some fucking, like a big pipe. In Pittenford Park, there was like a big yes. fucking pipe. I couldn't even walk through that yeah. fucking thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, I know the one. That's yeah. how fucked up I was back then. Yeah. Um, I basically got forced through it. <laughs> <laughs> I forced me through <laughs> it. And I was like, yeah. and, and honestly, that was a big thing for me. So yeah, yeah the, the whole, so talk the guys through the, the breathe. The yeah, breathing the breathing thing. And they do teach in the special forces now, in some uh, special forces units in the world, they teach this. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> what happens when you get into a pressured situation, your breathing, become, your breathing becomes erratic. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, any, anyone can relate to that who's fallen. When you fall in cold water, mm. the first thing you do, you're like, <laughs> yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, it, that's the same when you go into a pressured situation yeah. um, and you're anxious. Now, what happens then is cortisol increases, and that is your fight or flight response. Yeah. That is almost, and, and then also at that time, you know, our heads can only handle five to nine pieces of information at any one time when we're not stressed. When we're stressed, yeah. that goes down to one. I think my maximum one two. One maximum yeah, two. Yeah, yeah. So the thing is, it's like you can only sort of, um, and, and, that, and that's the whole point. When you're in a stress situation, the first thing you've got to do is control your breathing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Be conscious of it. If you know you're going into a stressful situation, do this technique. If you find yourself in this in this situation, mm -hmm. then the first thing you need to do is take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. But it's box breathing. And box breathing is basically breathe in for four seconds, mm -hmm. hold for four, yeah. breathe out for four. Yeah. And, and some, you know, there's all different types. Of, they're saying that the breathe out should be um, like six seconds as yes. opposed to four, you know, yeah. because that then tells them when you, when you breathe out, that sends a message to your system that everything's okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's when the when you're breathing erratically. Well, I remember once I had a panic attack on a flight. Funny, you remember Saul Campbell, the footballer? Yeah. Sitting next to him on a flight to Heathrow, and I started having the panic attack, right? So him having one? No, I started having one. Oh, right. One, right? Yeah. He's like, he's looking at me like that. I'm thinking, fuck. I'm having the fucking, created this horrendous panic attack. It was way back when before I started getting me shit. It was probably 2015. Yeah. And um, they gave me oxygen. And it made it like 20 yeah. times worse. 
because it's all that. You, obviously, yeah. you must be there must be something to be with that cortisol thing. You must be over yeah. oxygenated, yeah. and then I learned that whole Wim Hof shit. You know the way yeah. that bad bastard. Yeah. I did all his shit, and that breathing out thing is huge. Huge. Yeah. yeah. Huge. Yeah. No, absolutely. If people don't understand that. You know, it's it's so important. You, you breath control is so important. Yeah. And what that does is right lowers cortisol, yeah. and then you. Um, we then call that recalibrate. So that is when you're triaging the situation, you're managing to, to offload all the shit that doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, focus on one to two things that really do matter that you can control in that moment. Yes. You know, if you can just make it one. Yeah. And once you've got that focus, deliver. Yeah. But if you don't do that, you end up making a, a, a move, a decision, whatever it is based on fear. And, and that can push you into further danger or yes. make it, you know, let's look at it in, we teach, teach this quite a lot to salespeople. Yeah. Right. And I, I've been in sales and I've come out of a room before when I've walked down the corridor and I'm going, what an absolute twat I am. I've just lost about 10 grand or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Then the guy's in the room going, yes, got him because he's controlled that situation. Yes. You know what I mean? And it's just the fact because all that's happened is put that person under pressure and their, their body is gone. Just get me out of here. So they've t they've just said yes to anything, just yeah. to when it's a band aid. Quick, yeah. get out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, I need to think about. I need to ask me why. Yeah, you yeah, back yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Those are all. That's, that's, we call them stalls. Yeah, like you put up any stall they can. Yeah, yeah, exactly. To get you off the phone. Okay, yeah, <laughs> but the thing is, all you have to do is in that moment, just have to compose yourself. Yeah. You know, you're not under anyone else's dictation of what to do. You no. know what I mean? Yeah. But in those moments, you like feel so pressured to do, to say or do something yeah. or take action yeah. that it stops you from actually making a decision based on clarity and not yeah. confusion. Yeah, yeah, clarity and not confusion. Yeah. I love that, mate. Okay, yeah. but um, here's what I want to ask you. I almost forgot about this question. Let's talk about the celebrity thing. Which the celebrity yeah. SAS thing. <laughs> Which yeah. one? Which one? This is just stop putting his contact. <laughs> Who's the most famous person in your phone book? Uh, Chris Ramsey Mate, had Ed Foxy. Sheeran. Foxy. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Ramsey had Ed Sheeran. I think he wins. But this, how's the celebrity thing been? Have you enjoyed that? You know what? I, I talk about this in a lot, and, and a lot of people always say, "Which one do you prefer?" Yeah. Now, I do prefer the celebrity one, and the reason for that is not because I get to mix with celebrities, because that doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah. But the reason is, is because from the outside looking in, people have this perception of how these people frame themselves on the outside. Yes. They always have, they also, that perception is also controlled by the media mm. yeah. who then frame someone how they want the public to perceive yeah. them. So we've got an idea of these people, who they are, what they look like. So when they come into that, the, the process of special forces selection, the process of breakpoint, the process of the SAS who there's wins TV show Absolutely. This is where it is very much like the real thing. It actually shows how when people are in a pressured situation where they can't control the outcome, yes. the f actions, reactions and emotions become organic because yes. the ego is gone. Yeah, they're exposed. Yeah. They're exposed. Yeah. And it's only when that happens that you can really start to work with people. You can get them to work with people that they probably wouldn't have worked with in the past because their ego is in the way. Mm. It creates... Uh, uh, it creates a, an atmosphere or a feeling of vulnerability. Yes. And it's only when you can do that, people start actually gelling and bonding together. And people then see, it's like Joey Essex on the last show. It's Me. like Tony Bell. You. Joey Essex blew my fucking mind. Exactly. I thought he was a and fucking I'll, idiot before yeah. I went on there. I, I got, we got so many of those very same messages. Did he? About Joey Essex. Yeah. I never, I never, I, I look at him in a totally different light. Totally because it showed light. that, it showed yeah. that, you know, this perception of him that is this, you know, idiot that's thick and you know yeah. blah 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 all, the, yeah. all these this negative stuff and he's, yeah. you know wasn't it he was you know a totally different person it yeah. happened with it happens with all these celebrities yeah and it shows how powerful the process is yes when you've got the non-celebrity one it doesn't show the power yeah yeah because we don't know these people <clears throat> yes you know what i mean yeah. so celebrity one for me is is is, is the bomb yeah yeah, yeah. I, I thought that about joey essex you know what i want to ask you do you know what i, I was i was like wow when tony bellew when you had like 10 Women on a Tony Belly when you just started fucking hoying. Yeah, like, yeah, that was, and then <laughs> that was, went head to head with Ant. Yeah, and he was like, "Fuck!" I was like, "Yeah, he's a he's a uh, yeah." He's that a, he's we're a, just he's... talking about that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Before, yeah. How did um? Uh, what was your what was going through your mind then? Did you think anything was going to go off? Or well, I took a step back. <laughs> 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 no, but it was it was interesting because, and I think it was it was good for Ant to do because there's not many people who would that, stand up. Would do, uh, he's, but for him, he's probably never had that. Hardly ever had that in his life. Well, he might have had it on yes. his... But, you know, 
probably more recently, yeah. he's probably never had, would not expect that to happen. Yeah. So, and especially when we've got him in, you know, we're trying to work with these people. Yes. I mean, Tony is an awesome guy, but yeah. you know, he's the, the fight is definitely not left Tony. No, you know I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean, he's, he, no, you know, no, no, it hasn't. no you know, I, I mean? can imagine him making a comeback actually. Seen him on that show. Yeah. I think that show changed his life. I, I, like, totally, I when totally I watched agree. it, I was like, "This is chick." You could almost see it happening in yeah. the show. Obviously, yeah. it's production and that. Yeah, but I, you, you must have seen that happening as well. Yeah. No, you see it with them all. You see yeah. it with them all. You know, and and it changed. You've been on the course because yeah. you you can relate to it. Yeah, and it changes people because I honestly believe that when these people come on and their ego's gone, yeah. they don't get the opportunity to design the most perfect outcome that makes them look good. And that's what we all do. All of mm. us do that, don't we? Mm. You know what I mean, our ego want doesn't want us to look stupid we always yes. try and create a perfect outcome yes and they know they very quickly that's gone and they they can't and all of a sudden they're they're left with their true and raw character yeah and for them it's a hard pill to swallow but yeah. one that changes the life yeah you know mm. what i mean because then they start to really understand who they are yeah you know when you're living and trying to be the perception of what you expect everyone else to yeah to believe that you are yeah. you know you 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 the actual you becomes the byproduct of this person you created. Yeah. And I think what I media. saw is that when you first, when you first go into that like parade thing, you worry about what everyone thinks. Yeah. And then you quickly realize that no one gives a fuck. No, no one really gives a fuck because yeah. they're too busy worried about what they're doing. Yeah. 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 That's what I see on the show as well. I mean, actually when they first go in, they're looking around like this and then yeah. eventually they're almost, it's almost like a surrender to the process. Yeah. And that's, that's the word, you know what I mean? Until they learn how to surrender, you can never, the ones that don't learn to surrender yeah. go yeah. very quickly. Yeah. And that, you know, and it's often not, I, yeah. I'm, I look at it sometimes. I'm like, it's often not because they're the most out of shape. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes. There's some people yeah. I'm like, they're not in the best shape there, but they're, still, they're fucking still there. Yeah. No, exactly. Because, and that shows how, you know, it's the mental robustness, mental strength is so powerful. You know, obviously if you're really unfit, you're not going to last five minutes. Yeah. Um, but you know what I mean? It, it's just because a lot of them come on, they like that. I'm, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to smash it. I'm going to be the best. I'm mm. going to be the alpha male. I'm going to yes. be the best female, you know, whatever it is, yeah. they're going to go in. They then get there and they, they think shit, everything I told myself isn't going to work. Yeah. And they actually, re then the, this confusion comes that they then hold on. I've got to work with the people I'm competing with. They'll have never done that either before. You mm -hmm. know what I mean, and the only way they're going to get through is working with people that they want to beat. Mm. Yes. That's and a that, weird scenario, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's hard. That's yeah. really hard. And they've probably never ever yeah. done that. Yeah. You know I mean, we've got professional sportsmen on there. You know, footballers, the, the whole lights. They'll have never had to work, and yeah, and bond with someone they're trying to beat. And yeah. I don't think yeah. as well. I think a, a lot of that there is. The, there's nobody that can kind of talk their way through it. Yeah. No. You know what I mean? I found that no. very quickly. Yeah, you no, exactly. You, you can't, can't just, you can't blag your way. But like, that's, that's it. You try and create the perfect time. Yes. You can't do that anymore, yeah. can you? Nah. Because you're, you've surrendered, you've lost control. I'm not, you're no longer in control. Yeah. You know what I mean? That whole anxiety of not knowing what the fuck's happening. And that's, that's like real selection. You know, it's like, you don't know, you, you have got no, you've got no control over the outcome. Yeah. 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 Bringing it, bringing it to stuff you can control. Mm. I, I love asking everyone this. Yeah. What's your air? Uh, what does a morning look like for you? Morning. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I mean, and this goes back to 2015 when I really had to get a grip on things, 2014, 15. The morning for me is, this is, this is my power time, mm. you know, and this is where people fall down a lot. I think because they think, Oh, I've got time to do this. I've got time to do that. Yeah. The way I see it, you know, people also got, need to understand that um, your work and your time, you know, you looking after yourself and, and giving yourself, I call it mental wealth. Yes. You know, that's when you make an investment to yourself that gears you up for how you perform at work. So yes. if you don't do that, yep. then your work life is, you're not going to perform to your best anyway. So for me, I get it's up. It's like going into a workout, not warming up, right? No, no, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, exactly. And you're not, you're not giving yourself the best opportunity to perform. Mm -hmm. And I really think for me, I give myself that power of taking myself to the day every day. Yeah. You know what I mean? And when I say every day, I call my book, book battle ready because every day I'm fighting a battle to be the best version of myself. It doesn't mean that I do this process every day, but this is my perfect day. Yes. And that's up at five o'clock downstairs meditation. So 25 minutes meditation and I use a guided meditation or whatever. Mm -hmm. Now, when I look at meditation, a lot of people get freaked out because they don't think you're in the special, uh, you know, I was on the, yeah. I was on a, like a webinar with Jay to, uh, to a client last night. And yeah. like Jay says, yeah, I've just, I'm starting meditating as well. And a lot of people were going, yeah. 
ex special forces meditating. What's that all about? But the thing is, meditation for me is is so powerful because it's your focused attention at your intentions. That's what it is for me in the yes. morning anyway. Yeah. So I want to focus on what I want to achieve. Perfect chance to work on your breathing. Exactly. Perfect chance yeah. for that. Perfect chance to think of what you want to achieve, your goals, yeah. short, medium, and long-term goals. Yeah. And it really, the ability, and, and, and it's hard when you first start, but the ability to be able to clear your head of everything. Yeah, organise your thoughts. Yeah, yeah, it's so powerful. I think the challenge that a lot of people have is they think that, the, 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 I think the meditation has this, like, reputation for that you have to not think anything i'm yeah. like you've got fucking no chance no because as soon as you lie down yeah. all you can do is think there's nothing exactly. else to do yeah or even sitting down there's nothing else yeah. to do but think yeah the way you're describing it is you're organizing your thoughts in your head yeah. well they say seventy thousand to a hundred thousand thoughts go around our heads every day if you don't choose some of the things that you do want you're going to end up with a load of shit you don't want mm. and that is because you know and when you consider as well on top of that that we are as humans, we're wired negatively. And yes. that has just helped us survive to this day. You know, we're still from that blueprint. Mate, well, before you came in, I was shooting a video about this negative yeah. thing. And yeah. thing. I'm like, actually, it yeah. can be quite useful. Yeah. Because if you didn't think negatively, like, you, you wouldn't yeah. stay safe as a soldier. No, exactly. If a boxer doesn't think negatively, he wouldn't bother putting his fucking hands up. Yeah, well, and that's what, you know, exactly. There's got to be it, some. Yeah, there's got to be some. But the thing is, you've got to be able to identify with it and not let it consume you. Yes. You know what I mean? And yes. I always say this, we're still living off... You know, technology is flying past us at all kinds of speeds, but yeah. we're still have got that sort of primal instinct. You know, cavemen never used to come out of the caves and go, I'm going to have a massive day full of opportunity. Yes. Did they? No. They went, where's that fucking tiger? Am I going to eat? <laughs> or what's going to eat me? Yeah, that's exactly it. I bring yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, it's, and we're still in that. So that's why everything, every time we come up and want to do something that's new, yes. we want to make a change of something we've not done before. Like yeah. I said before about yeah. something that changes that habit loop. Yeah. We naturally go, shit. Let's focus on everything that could go wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? We do, yeah. don't we? Yeah, we no, do. You have a short honeymoon period going, yeah, that would be fucking, oh, hold on. Yeah. No, I'm going to look stupid. But it's it's a smart, yeah. in the, in the survival instinct kind of thing, it's yeah. a smart thing to do to think yeah. of all the negatives before the positives. Yeah. Well, there's no... Well, Are you going to die? I think it's getting stuck there. That's the issue. Yeah. Isn't it? yeah, yeah no, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like for me, you it's just a little yeah. bit of feedback. It's kind, yeah. It can be kind of useful. Yeah. It, for me, I think negative thinking can sometimes help you make more objective decisions. Yeah. Like if you only made decisions when you felt positive, A, you'd hardly make any, but B, mm. some of them would be shit. Yeah. Mm. You'd make yeah. shitty risks. You'd yeah. take risks that aren't necessary. Yeah, no, absolutely. But I think there's a lot to be said about, you know, the more you... The more you sit and linger about, I mean, for me, I've got I've got something that drives me forward, you know, which is over, always overwhelms negative yeah, circumstances. Yeah. Yes, you know what I mean. So I don't become a victim of of my circumstances. Yes, I don't get lost in that. You know, you, ha- you know what I think you have, and we're talking to Martin Stableton about this. Talk mm. you have, and I think a lot of people lack this now in yeah. their life is a purpose. Yeah, like. Even not if it even it's not like oh I was born to do this it's like this is what I'm working towards. Mm. I think a lot of people when they get to a certain age just stop doing that. Yeah, they stop setting goals. Them. They get married, they have kids, they get a decent job, they get a car. Yeah, done. Yeah. And then after that it's just I hope I make it to me week in fucking yeah. Turkey. Yeah, yeah. There's no, no there's no, no ex, there's no drive anymore. Yeah. I think people lose. That's what you have. Well, the thing is, I that's did, where I, your focus yeah. goes. Yeah, exactly. But I didn't find I didn't understand this whole purpose thing. You know, when I was in when I joined the special forces. I didn't realize what it was. I was like, well, something's not right. Maybe it's because I'm not going to war every day. Yes. It wasn't that. It was the fact that I hadn't found my purpose. Yeah. I didn't understand purpose at that yeah. age. I understood purpose when I then stumbled across it when I went and saved those kids in Thailand. Yeah. That is when I went, wow. And that was the power of helping other people. That yeah, a lot of, man. you know, and that, when you look at, when I look at everything now, you know, when I first left, because I didn't get, you don't get paid much money as a special forces soldier, believe it or not. But when I came out, it's you know, that insane. So, it's that insane. Yeah. It's mad, isn't it? Uh, it, it is mad. Well, you it's tell mad. that to footballers and that. Like, you, Having you said got paid that, what? this might sound very controversial, but my wife told me that Boris Johnson only gets paid 150 grand, which I well, don't that's think that's all he earns. I don't think that's very, <laughs> That's all he deserves. I don't think that's, <laughs> don't think that's It's very, not, though, is I don't it? Think, nah. For that job, yeah, you know what everyone slates him. You brown know? envelopes. Do you know what? Right? I'm not a fan of him, but everyone keens him. I'm like, yeah. why the fuck aren't you doing his job? You couldn't yeah. fucking do his job. And exactly. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Exactly. You couldn't handle all that fucking shit. No, People no. talking shit about your family and that. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. So uh, Mor- uh, mornings. Uh, what a morning. Uh, yeah, we'll Wake up. Oh, morning. <laughs> Hold on. But where was we with you some t- meditation? Meditation. Negative thoughts. Negative thoughts. Purpose. Yeah, that that basically for me is my meditation. Twenty five minutes. 
Um, and I do that as a guided meditation as well. So I'll, I'll sit there. I've got a guided, you know, through, you yeah, can yeah. find all these resources on Google, YouTube, everywhere. Yeah. Um, so that's really powerful for me. Um, and then once I've done that gym session or run, mm-hmm. and that is super important, you know, doing some kind of health. If I, if I have a shit day, but I've been for a run in the morning, it's still a success. That day is still a success. Yeah. What kind of distance something. is it running these days? About 7k. Oh yeah. Yeah. 7k and my gym session. You're loaded in that still or not, are you? No, no, yeah. mate. I mean, I've, listen, I've stopped competing with myself. I've stopped, be- yeah. I've stopped beasting myself. Yes. You know, I don't wear a watch anymore when I go running. I don't care. Really? What- I know, I, I know, it, look, I know if I'm not, I know if I'm not working, I know if I am working. Yes. I'll always try and push myself, yeah. but I don't need that's to go. That's really interesting. Oh, don't, I, yeah, I, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So I don't, yeah. I don't. So now yeah. you're fucking, you're, you're running for a different, completely different reason. Yeah. I, I see running and everything now is it's more, it, it creates such more of a, a mental stability. For yes. Me. You know, if I stop training, Fox is the same. If we stop training, I turn into, I, I get so negative. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm grumpy. I'm not, yes. I'm not, you know, so for me, the, the, you know, with, with fitness and everything, for me, looking half decent yeah. is the byproduct of feeling good. Yes. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't train because I want to look all right on Instagram or what. I train because I because I, I want to feel good. Yeah. And then you know, and people I think have got that wrong, that message wrong. Yes. Because everyone's fighting to look good for yeah. Instagram. Yes. But a lot of these people that look good don't feel good. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's um, so. Anyway, yeah, I do that. Then I come back, and then I've got. I'm I'm in front of my computer by seven o'clock. I mean, what's that? WhatsApp is not going crazy. My emails aren't going crazy for that day. Yeah. I've only got to look over stuff that probably needs a bit of traction. You know, the emails come in, all you got to do is send them back and give them, keep, keep, keep the momentum going with hope yeah. the stuff. Yeah. Make sure that stuff's done. And before you know, eight o'clock, I'm RFD. Hang on. I'm going to figure this out. Ready for the day. Close. Ready for Ready for GD. domination. Oh, oh. My God. come on. <laughs> spoke that with the, I thought he was going to say that in American accent. Then. Domination. I'm ready for domination. Woo. It's Operation Domination. <laughs> and because I got that attitude of gratitude. <laughs> okay, now you're stealing on my life. <laughs> yeah, ready for domination. I know it sounds drastic, yeah. but I am actually ready Dude, for domination. I love that, yeah. 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 You know, and, it's, and that then for me, I, I don't really care what gets thrown at me. But if you're the type of person that's like snooze, 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 no. not only will you, the day will walk all over you, but you'll make decisions based on snooze. You know what I mean? I think a lot of time, the more you allow yourself to linger over decisions, the more your mind will sabotage. I once got, I once got a, a cold summons because I hit snooze. <laughs> I tell a story on the stage. What? I'll have to tell you this because you'll never hear it. I, I tell this on the stage all the time. So yeah. back in the day, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, I used to teach these boot camps outside, right? Yeah. Fitness things. And my morning routine was I get up, have a coffee, have a shit, go and teach yeah. this class at quarter past yeah. six in the morning. Any one, one day, I, did, I hit snooze, got up a little bit late, I got the coffee, missed the shit, started teaching this session on the beach, needed a shit, 10 minutes away from my house. So I, I thought, shit, fucking yes, there's a public toilet there. It's quarter past six in the morning, wasn't it? It wasn't open. So I thought, fuck, what am I going to do? I've got 20 people doing fucking lunges there. <laughs> My house is 10 minutes away. I need a shit. And when you're a guy, that's not staying in me. It's coming yeah, out. Yeah. So I thought, outside of the public toilet, I had a shit. Obviously walked away. Fucking CCTV. Nah. And the news was, uh, I got a call summons. So they, they, that's what happens. That's an example of what happens when you hit snooze. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that bad, yeah. So anyway, don't, yeah, anyway, don't forget, don't, 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 hit don't slam the snooze. You know, I think snooze almost, and I, and I, I remember in your book, you, you, you recommended the book about making the bed. Yeah. Because that, for me, sets the mood and the tone for you, yeah. right? No, I, but the thing is, what I talk about, I talk about breakpoint. I, I tell a, a quite dramatic story about when I got attacked by a chimp as a kid, and that was my first breakpoint because yes. I made the decision to do something while this chimp's attacking me. Yeah. And that was stepping into that short-term discomfort. I was taking it up a level to retaliate. Yes. But I knew by doing that, it would, you know, up the ante with the chimp. Yeah. But that was my chance of living that day. But the thing is, and I don't say it, you haven't got to go off and get find a circus and get attacked by a chimp. You know what I mean? Buy all his first book. Is that but, your first book? Yeah, that's one? in Breakpoint. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, also, it's also mentioned in that one. But the thing is, it's about doing the small stuff. Because, yeah, you know, you get up in the morning, you're like, oh, I'll, I'll leave the bed. Yes. You know, you, at night, you're like, oh, I'll leave the dishes till the morning. And it's it's about taking care of that small stuff. It's not about so much as just the physical act of making your bed. It's yes. the fact of you taking care of the small stuff. Because when it comes to the big stuff, that takes care of itself. Yes. You know, how you mm. do anything is how you do everything yeah 
Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it just creates that. Amazing. Yeah. So one more question that I want to ask you. One more question, because this is important. And mm. I get asked this all of the time, mm. because we've got a lot of, I mean, we've got a lot of listeners, I would say 80% of them are guys. Yeah. Um, 20% of them are ladies who all have a crush on Mac. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I've got to Their ask Their eyes another. aren't painted on. I've got to ask, actually, I'm going to ask you another two questions before we get serious. Oh. <laughs> no. right, these are two important questions. Yeah. Does sparkling water make your mouth dry? No. Do you like sparkling water? I love it. Mate. Biased opinion. Biased <laughs> opinion. He's, he always goes on about, I ask everywhere, mate, I ask Chris Ramsey. And it's... he went fucking off on one. Seriously? Honestly, you know the comedian Chris? Yeah, yeah. Went off, didn't he? Yeah. Went off on one. He said, I was on the fucking Saturday morning, the Saturday kitchen. He said, the brought us a sparkling water and I fucking sent it back. Anyway, but here's another one. Mashed potato, mm. on a scale of one to ten, ten being amazing, where are you at? Mashed potato. Five. Five. Yeah. What would you rather have than mashed potato? Of all the things you could do with a potato, what would be your thing? Jack potato. Jack potato. Yeah. Roasties, fries. Oh, roasties. Potato wedges. Oh, mate. You stop brown. it. Hash stop brown. It. Yeah, yeah. See? yeah. Waffles. Yeah. Waffles are pretty yeah. low, no, actually. Waffle, not no, for me, no, for me. No, for me. Have you ever had a back potato? No. Oh. It's a roast potato, but it's it's been sliced on the back of it. Little yeah. slices across the back, mate. And then butter in. He, reck- he, reckons, he reckons mashed potatoes, the bomb. Yeah. I'm like, Had it last night from Nando's. Mate, no, I'll tell you what, you can't beat a roast. That's what it is. You can't beat a roast. No, you can't beat a roast. Nah, he, nah. Honestly, a, two <laughs> members of staff in the office, I said, if you had a, if you had a choice. I was being generous roast, with five, you know. If you want, like, <laughs> <laughs> if you want a low carb diet and you're like, I can only have roast, these are carbs. Yeah. Uh, sorry, roast, these are mash. These fuckers chose mash. Mash. What the fuck is the matter with them? He put baby potatoes higher than mash. That's boiled baby that's, potatoes. They're the spawn of Satan, them. <laughs> 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 they grim. Wow. Anyway, let's go serious questions. So this is yeah. the last question for you, Alex. I don't take it up your time, mate. Um, booze. How yeah. do you get a handle on that? Mate, that was the toughest, the toughest gig in my life was controlling booze. Yeah. Um, but it was the one thing that I knew that if I didn't get a control of that, yeah. then I wasn't going to achieve anything. And that was a repeat habit loop for me. I was losing... So it's, it's, I don't know, look, I don't speak for everyone here, but for me, you know, I used to enjoy it. I used to have some great times on it. I've had some yeah. great, great adventures. Yeah. Um, but for me, when I drink and I'm probably something inherited from, from the military as well is, you know, we used to work hard, play hard. Yeah. There were three day binges. I didn't yes. lose that. You know, that, that was, that's yes. part of my, you know, so when I have a drink, I drink, uh, well, I drank to get drunk. Yeah, so it's not and a I, pint. No, it's not a pint. No, no, it's not no. A glass it's, of wine. What's the point of that? It's not a glass of wine. No, yeah, no. It's, it's like I drink to get drunk. All or nothing, yeah. And then I'll end up three, you know, three days later in a in a bag of shit, you know, so depressed. And then before I know it, I've lost like three days getting back on track. Yes. You know, my my old week used to be I like used to get hammered at the weekend. It took me to Wednesday to get back in back on form. So I'd start performing on Wednesday. Then Thursday night was warm up for the weekend. Yeah, you know what mm. I mean, it was that was that was that was my, that was my repeat loop. Yeah, and I wasn't achieving anything. Yeah. So for me, getting on top of the drink was something that um, I had to, I had to I had to sort out. And what um, what, is, what is some of the the have strategies that you use to kind of keep it a bay or anything that you yeah, do well, night out apart from drink sparkling water because it's amazing. No, but this I mean <laughs> yeah, yeah sparkling water, but I mean amazing. that does get a bit tedious and you know after yes. you know time and time again when yeah. you go into the pubs but um you know seed lip and all drinks like that. Have, have you tried that? No, seed Mate. lip. Seed lip. What is it? Woo-hoo! What is it? Seed lip. Seed lip. You look for seed lip. They do a load mm. of drinks that basically they taste like gin. Flavor really? gin. Uh, Mate, it's bliss. One thing I do know is yeah. they definitely won't have that in South Shields in a bar. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want that in. You can have a seed lip. <laughs> you can have a fat lip. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, don't go asking for that. Maybe I should yeah, come up your way. Ollie, seed what, lip. what would you like? Seed lip. Seed lip. Uh, he has a so, yeah, yeah. A but I tell you what. Mm. Actually getting a grip on that stuff. And, and initially, initially when I stopped, like the first Friday night, I was like, ah, fucking. Yes, mate. Yep. What the fuck do I do? Yeah. You know, it's like, and then, so, then I realized that I was like, wow, how much of my life did that consume? Mm-hmm. Massive amount of my life. And I was thinking, how do I fill these gaps? But then over a short period, like over a month, I started filling those gaps with productive things. At that time I was starting a business. So, yeah. you know, on a Friday night, instead of being in the pub, I was like still doing some work, still doing work. And I, I used to think the plus of this is the fact I wouldn't be doing this. You know, yes. being, I'm doing something productive. Yeah. And then before I knew it, I had so many things filling the gaps of those, you know, the, the, the gaps, yes. so many productive things filling the gaps. I was yeah. thinking, how the fuck did I have time to drink? Mm. You know, 
You know what I mean? I actually went back to drinking. I tried it again. Did you? Yeah, because I thought, oh, I've got a grip on this now. And yes. You know what I mean? I, I was scared I was missing out. Yes. So I thought, I'll try again. Yeah. And that was with the lads in Chile, you know, when we just filmed uh, series three or four. And, yeah. uh, you know, I was like, oh, I'm scared of missing out. So I tried it. And then before I knew it, you know, I was like, back to square one. Oh, yeah. Losing productivity. Eight months I spent then. And then one day, I can remember I got back from the recce. Yeah. Like I started in Chile with the lads when we were filming. Then we went on a recce to the first one in Scotland. Yeah. And I can remember I came back from that. I'd been drinking all week with the lads. Yeah. I got back. Laura was away. And yeah. I was in my home. Got home that Friday night. The next morning, I was I was still sort of dithering around the house at 10 o'clock. And I thought, oh, you know what? I've had a hard week. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to watch a film. Yeah. Sat there on a Saturday morning, turned the TV around. And I went, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. And I went, if you weren't drinking, you'd be up the mountains, you'd be doing this, you'd be taking Murphy out for a walk. Yeah. Mm. And I went, right, that's it. Finished. Yeah. yeah, I love it. Mm. I love it. Ollie Ollerton, everyone, mate, thank you so much you for coming on. Mate, where can, people find, that. Thank you very much, where can people find out more about Breakpoint, what you do? Um, I think the best thing that people can do is actually go to my personal website, which shows all the projects, all my books, etc. And that's Ollie Ollerton, so O-L-L-I-E-O-L-L-E-R-T-O-N.co.uk. Amazing. Actually, mate, I've got another question. Sorry. Go on. Social media, what's your deal? Social your, media. I wanted to ask you this. Yeah. Social, I wanted to ask yeah. you this because it's important. Um, what's your thing with social media? What kind of relationship do you have with it? What yeah. I, to be honest, I mean, I, 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 I don't, I don't favour it. Yeah. You know, it, it consumes so much time. And, you know, if you really want to get into it, I, I, I know it's being controlled. Yeah. So, you know, the algorithms and, and, and yeah, I, I know it's being controlled. So yeah. I think it's a powerful platform and I use that to inspire people. Yes, I agree. Um, yeah. and, and that's great. But if I tell you now, if I didn't have to be on it for business, I would be well clear of it. Yeah, I love it. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much. Let's Thank, give you. Round Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.